What's up guys, Barry Game here, back with some more Infinite Magic Raid, and today, well, it looks like we are going to be getting a few events in a row, really pushing this new Hidden Wave faction. We're going to be getting, in the next summoning event, two additional Legend Heroes, one of them attack, one of them defense, and another epic attack hero. Now, they're all still nautical themed, they all have the same look, so let's jump into them. There is a lot of verbiage on these. Uh, Ikina, the first one we're going to talk about, the attack hero, has like the dual way of like her abilities so there's gonna be a lot to it hopefully you guys enjoy this one let's jump right into it okay so first up we have a blue mark attack hero from the hidden wave faction akina Ak akina Ak akina Something like that. Uh, she looks pretty cool, though. I like the look. Her abilities are a two-stage style attack, or really two different version. Uh, and I think majority of this is going to be going off of the ultimate ability here, the main active skill. Doesn't exactly explain it, but basically what the active seems to be is Secret of Water enters the Way of Ocean status for three turns and acts for an extra turn immediately. Way of the Ocean will not be removed when the owner dies or when a wave transitions. So you stay in that state, which I think turns all of these into the Shin format of these. Once you are in Way of the Ocean, when self is under, this status restores HP of max HP at the beginning of each turn. I'm pretty sure this ability just becomes like another passive skill where she's just healing but basically it ramps up every one of her abilities her basic attack here the four decks thrust deals two stages of attack damage to a single enemy with a chance to inflict wet two remember wet two is going to be the one that debuffs their basic attack damage uh, if she's in her heightened form though it looks like it changes it to dealing probably more damage i would guess and inflicting cold two which lowers their skill damage by up to 40 percent so interesting i would have thought it would do more stages or something but we'll see uh vortex attack is a big difference though you basically just deal two stages of an attack to a single enemy or deals two stages of attack damage each to a single enemy uh afterward hurls a spiral spike dealing attack damage and consuming all layers of vortex debris that you get from her passive with each layer owned healing extra attack damage uh it's stackable up to 50 layers now you get those from vortex force reduces the direct damage she takes meanwhile grant self one layer of vortex debris after casting vortex thrust the basic attack up here reduces the direct damage dealt by akina that part's the same and increases your direct damage dealt by her so not only are you reducing the damage you're also doing more output when you're in this form meanwhile grant self one layer of vortex debris after casting shin vortex thrust which again is that top one up there each time with a chance to additionally obtain an additional layer. So that's all interesting and all. Uh, it doesn't jump off the paper as being like overpowered, but honestly, we could use some not overpowered heroes once in a while, so we don't have to constantly be doing that chase. Now, Crystal Twin Spikes is her exclusive. Level one increases the duration of Way of the Ocean up here to four turns and grants self immunity to all control effects when self is under Way of Ocean. Now, that sounds extremely strong if she's fast and going before the enemies. That is really, really good. Uh, level two increases self skill damage dealt or more skill damage dealt if you're under way of the ocean status which okay cool more skill damage uh, and then lastly spiral spike has an extra piercing rate and consumes at most four layers of vortex debris now when self has 10 or more layers of it the extra damage dealt by each layer is increased that's basically talking about uh this vortex attack here so it doesn't sound like game breaking it does sound like you probably will want her at least as an e1 hero to start with um but yeah she's a decent hero uh we'll have to see how she actually plays out the second hero man this one is another defense hero that deals defensive damage i really hate these types of heroes because it always feels like they don't really have an impactful damaging capability but this one is interesting it has turn meter increasing uh immunity stuff like that he is part of the red mark faction let's talk about it he has the same effect where he will be able to go into the state of way of the ocean so you'll see here his first active skill power of torrent enters way of the ocean status during which self defense is increased and direct damage taken is reduced uh once you're in that form it turns into tornado bliss whenever uh so <laughs> we're gonna go with so is under the way of the ocean status increases self 
defense and reduces basic attack damage and skill damage dealt to self. So that's interesting. Uh, the basic attack deals defensive damage to a single enemy. Of course, inflicting wet too, which is okay. That's cool. Blowing their basic attack damage. Uh, the shin version deals same thing. Single target. This damage has an additional piercing rate. I don't think it's going to be that impactful. But what's really cool is the way of the ocean here isn't like a turn limit on this one. You'll see here, uh, Remarkable Courage increases self turn meter for a per certain percentage of max HP lost. So the more HP you lose or a percentage of your HP you lose, it'll turn into turn meter, which is pretty interesting. Uh, when Sowell is under Wave of the Ocean status, grant self immunity to stun, hypnotize, and freeze abilities. Meanwhile, Sowell can counterattack, cannot be counter, like can't be stacked with like uh, Catherine's counterattack, things like that. Wave of the Ocean ends when a certain percentage of max HP in total is lost. So that's how you basically come out of Wave of the Ocean. So if you never drop too much, you might just permanently stay in it, which is interesting. And then the act skill seems like a pretty, it could hit hard even for a defense hero. Deals four stages of defensive damage to all enemies. The percentage is really going to matter here. The first stage has a chance to reduce the target's defense by 60%. That's really cool. Uh, when Swell is underway of the ocean status, grant self one layer of tornado for part of max HP loss. Each layer of tornado increases the damage dealt by this active skill. Swell will, will withdraw from the way of ocean status and lose all layers of tornado after casting this ability. So if you don't cast the active, I guess you can kind of permanently stay in there as long as you don't lose too much HP. I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting one. And then lastly, his exclusives cleanses all debuffs from self when entering way of the ocean by casting power of torrent. Meanwhile, increases the total HP loss needed to end Way of the Ocean. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, cleansing debuffs, that's a solid E1 skill. Uh, E2 is when Sowell is under Way of the Ocean status, grants one layer of Wave Surge each time he casts Shin Tide Impact, which again is the, uh, the very first ability, his basic attack. If there are no less than two layers, the next Shin Tide Impact will consume all layers of Wave Surge and increase the damage dealt. Meanwhile, the additional piercing rate will increase. Wave Surge is not removed when he dies, so he will have them when he revives, if he gets revived. And last at E3, when Sowell is under Way of the Ocean status, grant self one layer of Torrent at the beginning of each turn and when or when self loses part of max HP in total each time. Each layer of Torrent increases self basic attack damage up to 20 layers and will not be removed when the buff owner dies or wave transitions. So it does seem like this might be his bread and butter just going to town with his basic attack, staying in, in way of the ocean. It's really, really interesting. I do think he has potential. I just really hate defensive damage heroes. Now, lastly, you'll notice this skill card is very short in comparison. That's because it is Gora, the shark, green mark, attack hero from the hidden wave. Uh, Spiritual Slash deals attack damage to a single enemy and steals part of their turn meter. Kind of cool. Uh, Water Jet deals four stages of attack damage each to a single enemy. Meanwhile, if they inflict a kill, refreshes the cooldown of Water Jet and grants self one extra turn immediately. That is pretty cool. That's actually really, really cool. Giving himself an additional turn if this kills a target. Be interesting. Uh, Shark Instinct. Gora has an extra piercing rate. Meanwhile, when self deals crit damage, this damage additionally has pierce rate. Wow. Crit rate is going to be huge for him. And then lastly, Water Blade Cleave deals three stages attack damage to all enemies. Not too bad, really. Uh, E1, grant self Resolute 2 for two turns after casting Water Jet. Okay. Level 2 after an enemy acts increase self turn meter or more if self turn meter is no more than 40 percent that's cool i mean if he if he just has his turn basically another two enemies go he's instantly back up to like 40 percent that's really cool and then lastly e3 water blade cleave the big one has extra crit damage so not too bad uh Akina, I think we really have to see how she works out. So, well, I mean, mostly defensive heroes have been like CC heroes mostly or H percent HP heroes. We'll have to see. And then Gora sounds interesting, like legit sounds like an interesting hero. Uh, it's just probably going to be weak compared to all the legend heroes. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the hidden wave faction. We should be getting more chapters in the chapter campaign system as well. Hopefully you guys enjoy us. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.